Okay, so this is my review of the comics that I've received. Not for this week, because I've not received those yet. But it's about three weeks worth of comics from last week and going be before then as well. Because as I mentioned on my community post, my post no post has been delivered to my house for weeks and weeks. So they finally arrived. So I've spent most of this week, I've had a tummy bug this week. So I've spent most of this week just catching up on all these comics so I'm just gonna so it's a lot to go through so I'm not gonna flick through them um, I'm just going to give a review without flicking through so the first one is Daredevil number five and it's by Saladin Ahmed and the artist is the last name's Karami I really enjoyed this um, I did another video about how Marvel's wooing me back with a few titles, and this is one of them. Very, very strong issue. Um, number six should be coming through my door hopefully tomorrow. Um, but yeah, perfect blend of the Anishanti run, which dealt with um, the more spiritual side of Daredevil, and also has some of uh, the essence a bit of Chip Zdarsky's run. And it's got a nice gentle humour flowing through it. So yeah, an easy 8 to 8.5 out of 10. I'll be carrying on with that. And then we've got number 2, number 3, and number 4 of Gods. Again, number 5 should be coming tomorrow, hopefully of gods and as, as I mentioned in my other video pleasantly surprised but I have found out now that gods is just going to be an eight issue series and it could be coming back but uh -huh. so I feel a bit cheated there but it saves me money at the same time but yeah a, a nine out of ten it's a lot better than I thought it, it deserves to be it's a really good comic um, I do recommend it it's almost like Marvel's version of a Vertigo comic but a bit tame because Marvel never goes explicit so they never really go fully adult but yeah 9 out of 10 really enjoyed it and it's nice that it's a Marvel comic where they're not changing the artists all the time it's the same artist and then we have Aven uh, Avengers Twilight 1 and Avengers Twilight 2 this is by Chip Zdarsky and Daniel Acuna really really nice look at a possible future for the Avengers where superpowers have been outlawed um basically there's a person who's got in power I don't want to ruin it because it's a, it's a fun reveal and he's basically making life hard for anybody who was an Avenger previously so it focuses on Captain America but he's not Captain America anymore so he's, so, and he's had the truth the um, super soldier serum taken out of him so he's, so he's aged so he looks like he's in his 60s 70s um, but he realises that this isn't how America should be so he meets up with certain people and it's got some really fun highlights showing how some of the heroes have aged and he tries to fight back to bring America back to what it should be so yeah again 9 out of 10 really strong series and I've I've gone a bit off chips at Oscar recently but this has brought me back to him because I don't like what he's doing with Batman and then we have Ultimate Spider-Man number one fantastic issue again number two should be coming hopefully tomorrow um if you've missed out on it get it digitally or get the third reprint when it comes out or get the trade because it is the best i'd say it is the best marvel comic out there at the moment for an, an ongoing i think it is going to be an ongoing and yeah i would give this a nine nine point five out of ten definitely carrying on with that as well and then we have ultimate black panther the other one in the ultimate range this is by um, Brian Hill I think who writes Blade and the artwork by Casella is really nice really interesting spin on Black Panther it merges the world of Black Panther with the world of Moon Knight to interesting effects it use, uses Moon Knight as more of a religion um, and it works the two worlds work well together and it's a good um, solid thriller so I'll give this an 8 out of 10 and then we have Batman Robin this is such a fun book and I think it'll speak it'll touch your heartstrings if you're a parent because it show it shows the humanity 
of Bruce, which we don't see much in Batman comics, which is refreshing. We used to back in the 80s, but not for a long time. And it's, re it's a really nice development showing how how much he does love and how much he is proud of Damien. Um, and it's just a lovely scene where Damien's showing his artwork. And I just thought, yeah, that just reminded me of how I am with my daughter when I look at her artwork, the pride you feel. Somebody else might look at it and go, oh, that's amateurish. But you look at it as a parent, you're like, it's the best thing I've ever seen in the world. And they nail it. So nine out of 10, one of my favorite series at the moment. And then we have Neil Before Zod 2 and Neil Before Zod 1. I love this series. This is by Joe Casey and Dan McDade. The artwork's like an interesting fusion of um, Daniel Warren Johnson meets um, Darwin Cook. It's got that nice like retro cartoony feel to it, but then a slight manga flavour as well. And it works perfectly for this comic. This is a good, solid sci-fi epic disguised as a supervillain comic um it's casey's very good at doing big epic superhero comics and he's he does a really good sod zod is a villain in this and he's a fun villain to read i would like joe casey to do new gods comic because i think it'd be perfect for writing dark side he's one of the most underrated writers out there but one of the strongest at the same time and if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to get this, I do urge you to get it because it is fun. There's some really nice panels in there as well. Um, I would give this a 9 out of 10. Next up is Green Arrow number 8. Loved, 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 loved this comic. First of all, the cover is fantastic. The villain's back on a matter player, Kevin Smith creation. And it's drawn, the comic is drawn by, the, by Kevin Smith's Green Arrow artist, um, Phil Hester who is one of my favourite Green Arrow artists. I like the one who's doing series at the moment, but I think he doesn't hold a, a light to, to Philip Hester. And yeah, Green Arrow's back on a more street level, so I'm happy, because I wasn't a fan of the time of why nonsense that was going on. But this was great. It was a solid 9 out of 10. And then I tried Red Hull, Red Hood, not Red Hull, but that's Red Hood the Hill Zero. That collects the two issues, what were from during the time of the Joker Wars, I think it was. Um, it's drawn, written by Sean Mosbury, who's not mostly known for his artwork. It's good, it was solid, it was okay. I give it 7 out of 10. Um, just one second. And then I. Picked up number one of the new six issue series of Red Hood by Sean Mosborough and Sanford Green on the arts. Sanford Green is a really solid artist. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's got more of a. It's kind of like this is like the Bronx version of um, Gotham. The Hill, and it, it's it's I like it. I like how he's um he's given a bit of humanity to Red Hood because sometimes Red Hood can come across as a bit of an asshole. And then this one, this, how he it makes him much more likable. It's the holidays. It's the first issue. It's just setting the scenes at the moment. But I'm, I'm on for the ride. But again, I'd only give it seven at the moment. But I think it will get higher. Now, I was going to stop the flash because it's get it was it was a com, it's a convoluted sound. You can forget what's going on from month from month. But this one pulled me back to getting it monthly. It's focusing more on his son. And even the artwork by Diodasa Juna has calmed down a bit. He's still got his crazy, crazy panels where there's panels there just for the sake of having panels. But yeah, it was fun. I'd give the story an 8 out of 10. The reason I wouldn't give it anything higher, he's doing it in the voice of um, Flash's son. But for somebody who's meant to be, what, 12 or 13, um, he's got a huge vocabulary, more than I have. So uh, it's like he's swallowed a whole thesaurus. So that pulled me out a bit because thinking, no young child or tween speaks like that. Um, but apart from that, it's a good solid um, comic. So I'll give it an uh, 8 out of 10. Now I'm just going to pause the video because my battery's low. <laughs> 